My name is Kari Gro Johansson and I will explain about the new University Hospital in the Stavanger region. The project is owned by the local Helse Stavanger, which is the project owner, and we are going to build phase one of a total of 200,000 square meters. And in the first phase, we will build 125,000 square meters at a cost of around 11.2 billion Norwegian kroner. And the construction started in 2019 and we are going to move in in 2024. And the reason there is 2023 and 2024 is because we have added another 20,000 square meters late in the process. And we will move all somatic bed patients and all emergency patients as well as necessary support functions, which means that all the psychiatrists will be back in Vorland, where we are today. And there will be a single bedroom, including bathroom, for all patients. Today at Vorland, there are five people in one room. Now it will be a single room. And also, we will have a bed in the room for relatives. So it can be quite comfortable in the new hospital. So here you can see some pictures of the development site as of today. And you can see there is still a lot of work to do, but we are far ahead already. Uh, the historical day for this building project was actually June 21st, 2017, because then the board of Helsevest said yes to the project, because we had to ask for money or ask for uh, a loan by the government. And they said yes. And then it was actually the historic day to start building the first phase. And we are situated up at Ullanhau, which was actually a brand new site, which had an area regulation back in tw March 2017. And uh, in the same area is also the University of Stavanger, which means that a university hospital and a university are linked together and can have kind of win-win uh, situations for students and patients. And what are we doing now in 2020 and 2021? The first thing we did actually was to construct the parking house for all the employees. And that was completed and started uh, used in February this year. And the reason for that is for all the building uh, people at the building site can actually park their cars in this parking house when, while they're working. Uh, the pop-up production of stairs and repos and columns pillars are done on site because we have a lot of prefabrication, which means that they, all the pillars are already ready at site. And when you need them, you just pick them out from the kind of store. And completion of the groundwork and the concrete work for the culverts will be done in 2020, which means that we have actually two floors underneath the surface where all the logistics is used and all the transport of food and clothing and everything you need in the hospital and all kind of taking out uh, things that should, should be uh, waste, for example. Uh, and we also have been drilling a lot of underground energy wells. There will be 96, but the half of them we have drilled now and use it as uh, uh, the heat when we are doing the construction, which is quite uh, good for the energy and environment. Uh, we have uh, concrete slides for the elevator shafts, and that was done, done in May. And we are going to do the next in September and then in October, which means that we are building concrete over three weeks constantly, 24 seven. And we will continue with the structural and construction work during 2020 and 2021. Then we will start the installation of the facades in the spring of 2021. And the infrastructure and the roads and the culverts will, con will continue through this period. And the major part of the contracts are out on competition. And at the end of 2020, we, uh, we think that about 90% uh, of the contracts will be awarded. So then we know exactly how many p uh, contracts we are going to have. And if you have an overview of the hospital seen on this picture, you can see that what we call the A and the B buildings, they will consist of patient rooms and outpatient rooms mainly, which is kind of uh, quite similar rooms. Uh, on the east side are the E building, which is the most technical building where all the laboratories, 
operating theaters, radiation, intervention rooms, everything that's technical and very expensive equipment. And the CND is actually the emergency rooms, patient rooms, intensive care, uh, premature rooms and auditorium. And it's a very compact uh, building, which means that everything, everybody is moving around on bridges in the second floor and the third floor, which means that you will always know where you are in the building. So if you get lost, you get out in the corridor and you can see easily, oh, this is the building A, B, C, etc. And also, we will complete the e-building by adding the 20,000 extra square meters I told you about. And the reason for that is actually the government changed some of the loan, um, the, the payback time for loans. And then we wanted to have more loan to be able to build a total e-building because it's much more efficient to have only one place for, for example, operation theaters. And that's the reason we have now extended the finishing time from 2023 to mid, mid of 2024. And this is just a picture showing lit earlier on how you can see where the different buildings are on the site. Uh, since some of us are coming from the oil and gas business, we have been very, very uh, tight on the HSE and Q targets. Some people from the construction industry are not used to that kind of rigid, they would say rigid HSE requirements. But we think it's very, very important that everybody comes safe home from work. And what we are saying is that the most important qualities are empathy, consideration and willingness to support everyone who participates in the project. And together we create the level of security. Because you can't do it only by yourself, everybody has to be involved. So, uh, which kind of contract model do we have? Uh, when back in 2014, 15, when this project started, really started, uh, our uh, CAO said that we, are, we, are, we must kind of be able to invite local companies to be able to bid. Since we are a public entity, we cannot go out and say we like you to deliver this and you to deliver that. We have to have a competition for everything. And if you have two big contracts, only the majors from maybe abroad or national can be able to bid. But if you divide it into smaller pieces, a lot of local industries can actually deliver bids. So what we did, we kind of chopped up the project and find out that if, if we were between 20 million and about 50 million, there was a lot of companies in this area able to bid. So, so we did. And here you can see some pictures of some of the contracts we have landed. A lot of companies, local. And the strategy for contracts is it's the builder controlled project planning. So we are actually in charge as the project owner. And we have also the project own, owners control contracts. So we actually control, instead, instead of you have a total entrepreneur, we are kind of the entrepreneur. And that's the reason we have about 90 plus contracts. And the division is not finally decided by the approval of the preliminary project. So we said, we will chop it up later on if necessary. And we have done that. And sometimes we have even put together some contracts. And we have changed along the way. And in addition, we have decided to negotiate every project, every contract. So first we pre-qualify everybody that's supposed to be able to, to give a bid. And then we negotiate with everybody, maybe two or three or four times before they deliver the final bid. And then we uh, award a winner. So, why did we actually decide to use PIMS 365? When I was uh, appointed to this uh, position, that was actually November 2014, I said to myself, okay, I'm coming from the oil and gas. I was very well of PIMS. I used it in a lot of projects. And I thought, what's actually, what, what is there to offer to the contracting industry and to the building industry? Nothing, nearly only some Excel sheets and you know some bits and pieces. So I phoned uh, Omega and said, dear, dear me, we need something for the building industry. And they replied to me, well, we are just started the process. We have, for example, what they call the HSE REC, or HMS REC in Norwegian. And that was actually development from Oslo Kommune. And we are, have started the process of kind of making a, a model for the const construction industry. 
And I said, okay, then we need to, you, Omega, need to go into a competition to be able to deliver your system to the building of hospitals in the whole Norway, because there's a lot of hospital projects going on. And then they attended the competition back in 2015. So Omega won. And I said, I want to be a pilot. <laughs> so Omega didn't have to look for a pilot project. I kind of volunteered. And because I knew from my experience from Statoil also, that you could influence the, the model in the end if you are a pilot. So what are we using PIMS 365 for in our project? Uh, and we have actually taken all modules on board. And I don't think ev every module was uh, developed when we took it on board. I thought so, but it wasn't. So we were kind of along the way. Um, and all contractors, and we are 90, remember, all contractors must use PIMS 365 for all variation order requests and variation orders. And all technical queries and all deviations are put into PIMS. So what I say is everything is connected to everything. There should not be a single worksheet or a single mail outside of PIMS. Then it's not leg legal. It has to be inside PIMS. So we also do all reporting. We have weekly reporting, monthly reporting and quarterly reporting. And also we have reporting from the contractors into the various project managers within the project before they report uh, on to me. And we are using HSC REC. We have cost control, we have all the contracts, we have all the reporting, as I said, and also risk management, which actually also is very important, the module in this project. We have document control. And like I said to, to Omega when I first uh, contacted them back in 2014, you need to include BIM, building information management into the PIMS system. And they did, and that I think is most, the most maybe best of the whole uh, modules. And also with, within BIM, we also have the innovation called FDOE, it's the Operational Documentation, the LCI, which means that when you have finished the project, you deliver the whole project to the operational department and they have all the information they should continue to use into the model. And also we have the completion, which is also very important from the oil and gas business and is also used with us. And last but not least, the meeting module, including all the actions. So as you see, we have uh, everything from PIMS. In addition, we, I have a blog every week, which I put on the front page, which everybody, when they open PIMS, they see what actually is important this week. And uh, I had always something about HSE. And then there are some other bits and pieces about things that are going on or things that you should be aware of. And everybody has their personal site. So you have kind of your own personal, so you can actually mix together what actually suits you best. So I think that's in short is what we use PIMS for.